Well, first of all, congratulations. Congratulations to the graduates and to parents and family. Well, 1982, I was you um, in a different auditorium. It was NUS Business Second Batch. Today, NUS is among the best in Asia, and it's the top tier globally. Thanks very much to your dean, the faculty, and the administration whom we do not really see here. You got in, you did the work, and today you're graduating. I am so excited to be here speaking with you that I actually flew 16,000 km to be here to celebrate with you. Truly. Distinguished Professor Andrew Rose, Dean School of Business, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and class of 2024. I am honored to speak with you today, and I reflected on my 40-something year journey since I was seated like you uh, on graduation day in 1982. And I thought, what could I share with you that I believe could be useful for you as you embark on your journey of your adult life? And I came, I have one message. Here it is, in two sentences. Life is often ambiguous, unpredictable, and uncomfortable. But the degree, the degree of discomfort that you're willing to take determines the range and richness of your achievements and your fulfillment. So this is not a negative message. I know you're too good to just do what is normal. You want to do big things. You want to do difficult things. But that is what, that is when you will face with the discomfort. So I repeat, life is often ambiguous, unpredictable, and uncomfortable. But the degree to which you are willing to take that discomfort will determine the range and richness of your achievements and your fulfillment. Let me talk a bit about discomfort. We all know that, that everything really worth doing is going to be scary, is going to be risky. Um, every big goal will involve things that you don't prefer. So I'm not just talking about risk. Discomfort is broader than risk. Okay. So for instance, we often know what we want to do. But then I catch myself in those situations telling my friends, well, I don't really know what to do. This is so complex. I'm still thinking about it. But actually, what's going on? What's going on is I know what I want to do, but I don't like some aspects of it. That's an example of discomfort. Another example is um, in order to do big things, in order to do challenging things, we often have to work with people and conditions that we may not like, that we may disagree with. That's discomfort. Okay, and finally, one more example. Very often, we know exactly what the action steps are. But there is no guarantee that even if we ex execute well, that we'll get the results that we want. So, that's what I mean by life involves a lot of discomfort. What do we do about that? Sometimes I like to think, oh, maybe I'll get more training. Maybe I'll network more, get to know more people. Maybe I'll wait for the, a better timing. But at the end of the day, when I reflected on my 40 years, this is what I learned. The only way to do what I find I'm uncomfortable is to find courage. It is not about being fearless, okay? It's not about training yourself or doing whatever it takes to be fearless. It is instead 
Instead, it is staring in the fear and doing it anyway. So, why did I say just now that this is not a negative message? Because the degree of discomfort actually is your signal as to what is holding you back from going bigger, from doing something more meaningful. Okay? So it is meant to be a positive message. Now, if we find the courage, if we find the courage to deal with the discomfort and do what we need to do anyway, to just start, then life can be an adventure. I'm sure you heard various versions of, oh, life is a marathon, not a sprint, or it's not just the destination, it's also the journey. I thought about this and I realized that when we do what is uncomfortable, we show up with courage, life becomes an adventure. You can actually enjoy the journey. Of course, we are going to have some wins. You are very good, right? You're very driven. You will have a lot of wins in your next five years, 10 years, 40 years. But there will be days when you'll be frustrated. There will be days when you face setbacks. There will be days when you miss opportunities. This is when the courage allows you to enjoy the journey. You pick yourself up to hustle some more, to adjust, but win or lose, it's the entire journey uh, that, you are, that you'll find fulfilling. Okay, so just to recap, my message is very simple. As you go forward, when you look for big problems that you can solve, you will find that there will be things that are ambiguous, unpredictable, and quite uncomfortable. Face, find the courage to face it, to do it anyway, and you will have a great adventure. Now, maybe you might say, okay, give me a couple examples. I'll give you two examples. 1982, I was like you here. 1985, for all kinds of reasons, I found, uh, sorry, 1984, I found myself fresh off the plane in Philadelphia at Wharton School of Business. Getting in may be a nice uh, achievement, but what did I find? I, found, I was faced with culture shock and competition shock. What do I mean by that? Culture shock. I saw a food truck. I wanted to buy some breakfast. There was a sign that say, said B-A-G-E-L, 50 cents. I stood in line wondering, what, is, what are B-A-G-E-L-S? By the time it was my turn, there was a line behind me. I said, oh, can I have a bagel? What happened? The guy laughed at me. The vendor laughed at me. The people behind laughed at me. I ran away. I never figured out what a BAGEL is for another six months. So that was one example of culture shock. Culture shock and competition shock was when I showed up in class on day one and I was told that 50% of your grade depends on classroom participation. Now, I was valedictorian at NUS. I thought I knew how to get A's, right? But I didn't have 50% of my grade those days in 1980s dependent on classroom participation. So that was what was holding me back. I wanted to graduate near the top or at the top of Wharton. But how am I going to do this? So how did I deal with the fear? Quite simple. Every morning on the way to class, in my 10-minute walk to class, I recited this mantra, you will speak up, you will speak up you will speak up. That's all I did. Okay? And if I still could not build up enough courage, I take a longer walk. By the time I show up in class, the mantra is silent, and I tell myself one more thing, speak up and speak up early. So that was how I ended up doing pretty well at Wharton. Now, 40 years later, today, this message that I share with you is still something that I try to practice. 
Not that I do it every day, not that I do, maybe I don't even do it every week, but it is the same message. I run an international consulting firm. I do work, important work for the biggest companies in the world. But what is the discomfort? In, if I want to do the next project that I feel is more innovative, a first of its kind, I need to pitch. What does pitching mean? I could be rejected. Now, that's not good for my ego, right? And also, I could be rejected because maybe because of things I cannot control. Maybe because of things I did not see, things I missed. That is discomfort. But to the extent that I do that, I will get much more fun out of my work. And today, 40 years later, well, I kind of think that I still feel young and energetic like you. Okay, maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but um, this is what gives me the energy to continue. Now, graduates, your parents invested in you. Singapore invested in you. You invested in you. Today is your graduation. Tomorrow is day one of your adult life, your professional life. The world needs you. Everywhere we look, we know the world needs your ingenuity, your energy, your courage. May you always do what is uncomfortable. May you, when you see opportunities to make the world, your world, a better place. May you soar high and may you fly far. Congratulations and best wishes.